Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this episode, I will be interviewing Salah Khalifa, also known as Salah the Beast. Salah started Muay Thai over 11 years ago and was competing at an amateur level within six months of training. He holds three world title belts to his name and has competed at the elite level for over eight years. Amongst his many achievements, he has also been recognized as Martial Arts Illustrated Top Fighter of the Year 2014, Best Arab Athlete of the Year in 2014. He is the founder of Thai Fit Gym in London and is now inspiring people of all ages from all over the world to get fit. Assalamu alaikum brother Salah. Jazakallah khair so much for making the time to uh, be in this uh, series with us today. Uh, Salah, I know you personally and I'm very honoured that I, I know you as a, as a beautiful human being, as an inspirational uh, person, especially um, when it comes to the world of uh, physical fitness. So Brother Salah, you are the um, three times world Thai boxing champion and for the audience, uh, if you could just, uh, just in a nutshell describe um, who you are in a nutshell to the audience for, for someone, someone who may not have be following the Thai boxing world as much as we should be. <laughs> well, alaikum salam. Thank you very much for having me on this series. Um, it's been a pleasure to be a part of it and I'm very excited to um, watch this back and also watch all the other amazing people that you've got on the series. Um, in a nutshell, um, I'm a three-time world champion. Um, I'm a two-time British champion, two-time right. English champion and multiple um, medal holder. Um, so, um, I've been doing sports since the age of 15. Um, it got me out of a lot of trouble. Um, mm. Believe it or not, it brought me closer to my faith, to my dean. Mm. Um, and I'm very, very blessed to be in the position that I am now where I can influence the younger generations to do better, be better, and also to um, inspire them and let them know that your religion shouldn't be a barrier. And if anything, it should help you, propel you to you know, bigger things rather than hold you back. That's amazing, that's amazing, mashallah. So, Salah, in your journey um, to becoming world champion, mashallah, you must have gone through so many hurdles, so many challenges. What would you, what would you say has been your biggest challenge to date? Um, yeah, like you said, man, I've been through a lot of challenges. Um, some of them small, some of them big. But if it wasn't for those challenges, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So I'm very, very grateful for them. Um, I think that in the sporting world, one of my greatest challenges would be the racism that I faced. Um, you know, starting um, yeah. in in Muay Thai, um, I didn't look um, like your average athlete. I had a big beard, um, and you know, I was I practiced my faith, um, and I used that. You know, I made sure I made my dua, I made my prayers before right. getting in the ring. In the ring, you know, I would go in and then do my my salat and you know it was it was a big part of me a big part of who I was um, and people didn't like that um, fortunately alhamdulillah you know it helped me and strengthened me and I uh, came up victorious most of the time um, so you know it, you know people didn't like that but for me it doesn't really matter um, what matters is what's on the inside and um, you know my I wasn't going to change that for anyone I wasn't going to change my dean my iman uh, everything I believed in for anyone it doesn't matter um, and I'm very, very blessed to have, you know, very good parents, very good family. And they instilled in me from a very young age, you know, um, these strong beliefs. Um, and alhamdulillah, you know, it's, it's made me who I am today. That's beautiful to hear. And um, <clears throat> just on that, actually, like you, just to segue into that, you must have had, you know, we all have different role models at different stages of our lives and in different um, elements and, uh, you know, that motivate us. Who would you say has been your one of your most um, prevalent in, um, role models in your journey? To be fair with you, um, growing up in North London, I didn't have many role models, and um, one of you know the quotes that had the biggest impact on me was "Be the change you want to see." Oh yes, yes. So you know, listening to my father, taking my father's advice, I went into the sure. gym, and I wanted to be this role model for the other people because I didn't have many myself. So I wanted to change that. Um, so alhamdulillah, I found a good gym, went in there, started competing, um, you know, built a name for myself, uh, being a young Muslim athlete. Um, and then I started inspiring, you know, the younger generation, but also people of my generation, my friends and people older than me. Um, so to be quite fair with you, I didn't have 
that much of a positive role model and I just, you know, I thought there's something missing so let me, you know, step up and try and become that role model for other people. My son, I, lo I love that. I love that and I you know, respect the fact that, um, you know, you mentioned about how your parents had an impact on you upbringing and I, I think a lot of people, uh, they, they, there's a statistic saying that people who have their parents as a role model so generally usually very successful people um, as well. Most definitely, so, I mean, you know, I could name loads of names, I could yeah. say Mike Tyson, Muhammad yeah. Ali, all of these kind of people that have had, you know, positive impact, impact on yeah. my life. But, you know, when it gets down to it, it's people who were, you know, very, very close to me, my parents and my friends, and they're the people, you know, my teachers, all that kind of stuff, they're the people yeah. that have a direct impact on you and alhamdulillah I was very blessed to have good parents and you know I plan to do the same for my children and everyone around me. Inshallah, inshallah. So Salah so we've talked about your um, greatest challenges, we talked about your uh, some of your uh, role models. I want to ask you what keeps you motivated? You know because a lot of us go through stress and we have different ways of dealing with it. How do you deal with stress and what keeps you motivated on this journey? Uh, motivation is a very important topic. Um, how does one stay motivated? I mean, there's various different ways, and what works for me might not work for you, or what works for you might not work for me. So it's loads of different things. But what I try to do is I try to set myself goals, short-term goals, long-term goals. Growing up, I wanted to become a world champion. That was my long-term goal. So what I did is I tried to get as much experience as I can. Tried to spend as much time with people that were more experienced than me. I tried to go into the gym as much as possible. And you know, get the titles, get the British title, and work to the European, and all the way to the World Championship. And I every night would dream about becoming a world champion. Nice so I feel like it's very important to set yourself goals, short-term goals, long-term goals, and that helps. Um, and also, I believe that you need to be around people with the same mindset as yourself. You need to be around people that are motivated, people that are, you know, they want best for you. Um, um, my father told me once about a story of you know two kids they grew up in the same area um, one of them hang, hung around with um, you know kids that played in the dirt and they you know was around dustbins and bins and that guy was smelt the other the other brother or the, the other kid he was around people who used to sell perfume and he's not good so you are who you surround yourself with you understand? So I believe that a very good way to keep your motivation high is around yourself with people more successful than you or successful on the dean or on, you know, positive things. And that will always keep your mind in check and always motivate you to do better and be better for those people around you. Um, yeah. And to be honest with you, I had many sources of motivation, but one of the biggest ones was to better my family. You know, we're, mm -hmm. my, my mother and father came to this country with nothing. Um, so I wanted the best for them. Um, I wanted to be able to provide them with you know, better clothes, a better house, better, you know, food, high, higher quality food, all the, you know, better um, living than what we did, because, you know, Alhamdulillah, they've given everything to us as kids, you know, provide us with a good education, you know, taking clothes off their back to give to us. So, um, you know, what one of my highest uh, motivations has been my parents and giving back to my family um, and, you know, to be able to provide for them. MashaAllah, what a beautiful motivation to have. Thank you. And Salah, like, you know, you must have gone through not just mentally and spiritually, but so much physical stress as well in this in this journey. I mean, you, in the game you're in, it's all mind, body and soul. So how have you dealt with extreme stressful situations? Stress is, is very difficult. Um, and now it's being um, emphasised due to mental health. Yes. Um, a you know, big thing now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people are insecure. Um, a lot of people look outside of happiness when the actual truth is happiness is within. You know, I know people that are poor on one million pound a month, and mm. I know people that are very rich on one hundred pound a month. You understand? So it's all a mindset. Mindset is everything. Knowledge is power. You have to be happy mm. within yourself. Um, so me personally, dealing with stressful situations um, was through exercise. I would always go to the gym, train. Nice. My body would, would, would release endorphins and you know, it would just make me happier. Um, and I always found that if I was to train and push my body to the limits, my mental side would be a lot better. I'd be able to think clearer. I handled out like going through uni, you know, I didn't stop training, not once, because it just made me focus more, it made me happier, it made me remember more, it made me study harder. Um, so for me, uh, my release would always be to go to the gym, train. Um, as I grow older, alhamdulillah, now I'm married, I have kids, you know, 
do different things. Going to the cinema with my daughter, you know, that's that's very um, it helps me release stress, <laughs> loads of stuff like that. But for me, um, personally, I would say you have to look at within and look after yourself. You can't be of any help to anyone else if you're not good <laughs> yourself. Um, so kind of you know look within, see what makes you happy. Um, try and find um, a hobby that keeps you fit. Try and find a hobby that makes you some sort of income, and try and find a hobby that helps other people. So you know that them three things work for me, um, and I believe that if you look within, you'll definitely be a much happier person. And you'll be able to help those around you. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, That's I kind cool. of um, relieve my stress by giving back to others, um, by training, getting myself into the gym, and just trying to you know do good. Much fun. Yeah, there's some great pointers there actually. Um, so uh, you've had many achievements in your life. I know you. Personally, and I know you've had people who know you. You know they uh, look up to you for for various reasons, many achievements. What would you personally feel for you has been your biggest achievement to date? Yeah, I mean uh, I've done a lot. I've travelled the world. Um, alhamdulillah, I've, sure. raised, uh, I've done some good things for my people. I've raised a lot of money for charity. Um, but for me personally, my greatest achievement would be um, becoming a father. You know, I've <laughs> always always wanted to give back to my community and do stuff for the youth but then to have your own and alhamdulillah like you know they come to you as a as a clean slate so you're able to instill whatever you'd like into them so um, now I'm thinking about the future I'm thinking about you know helping and passing on what I've got to my kids and hopefully my kids will be able to do that um, again going back to be the change you want to see so I feel like my greatest achievement is alhamdulillah being a father and uh, being a husband you know, it goes way past the belts and the world titles and, you know, travelling and all the money. It's, it's way um, beyond that and a lot deeper than that. Um, and too many people chase materialistic things. They want an X amount in their account or they want to drive a, and, uh, this car or that car. And I believe that when you set your heart to thinking that's um, happiness and you get it, that, you know, you, you don't want something bigger, something better, bigger car, more money. So it never ends. It never yeah. ends as human beings, you know, and you've got to realise that. And the sooner you realise that as human beings we are weak mm. and we're always going to want something bigger and better, the sooner you realise that happiness comes from within. So alhamdulillah, my greatest achievement is being a father, um, sure. being a positive role model for my kids. Um, and, you know, I'm very proud of that and that happiness will never end. Beautiful, inshallah. So Salah, on that actually, if you could go back to your former 16-year-old self, what would you advise him? Take it slow. Because at that age, you want everything fast. Yeah. You know, you're, you're training a lot and you're just doing everything as fast as you can. Um, and along the way, you make mistakes. Alhamdulillah, after my first fight, I dislocated my shoulder. And, you mm. know, the doctor said I'd never be able to compete again. So, yeah. yeah, and look at me now, Alhamdulillah. So, you know, with Allah's help, I'm, I was able Which to defy the odds. But um, take it slow. Take your time, try not to make as many mistakes and you know, it's never a loss, it's always a lesson. So if you do, make sure you learn from it because growing up, if I was to lose or if I was to make a mistake, oh yeah, yeah, whatever, and then I'll try and move on. If I'd taken my time and taken every lesson from every mistake, then I wouldn't make more mistakes later down the line. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit generic, but I think it works for most people. Just take the time, um, all the right things will come at the right time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't mean anything if you was to, you know, get all your your um, wins and get all of your, you know, goals straight away. It just wouldn't mean as much. So take your time, enjoy the journey. Everyone's trying to get to the end destination. It's not about the destination. It's the process, right? Exactly. It's the, it's the process. It's the journey. That's what yeah. makes you who you are. Agreed. You know, that's what gives you value. And yeah. you're able to give that value to other people. What's the point of having all this knowledge if you don't share it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's all about the journey. It's all about moving. Take your time and everything will come at the right time. I'm so Salah, what's what's next for you now? What's your uh, next focus for the next, let's say, the next couple of years? Thank you very much. That's an amazing question. I love <laughs> that question. So, um, growing up, my dream was to compete. That then moved on to becoming a world champion. And then obviously becoming a father, having kids, starting my own business, alhamdulillah. Um, my dream mm -hmm. now is to open up some sort of health facility and youth club for the local community to use. Um, if you know about London or if you live within London, 
knife crime is, you know, rocketed up. Yes, yeah, and it's a very dangerous, yeah. you know, place to be in. Um, yeah. Who would have thought? It's one of the most multicultural cities in the world. Yeah. So my dreams and aspirations is to have a some sort of centre or health hub where kids can come off the street, come to the gym, learn about the um, health of their body, learn about their mental health, use the facilities, get into boxing, all the things that help mould me into a better person. I want to be able to provide for the for the youth outside. Um, it would have a area for kids to learn skills possibly work, um, learn about themselves, open up, because the issue now with London is mm. misrepresentation. There's not enough people that look like me, you know, being yeah. represented in a positive way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to help people of minority like myself um, and represent them in a positive way to tell them that, you know, you can turn your life into something positive, no matter where you started, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether you have a lot of money, little money, the good thing about the gym is everyone is the same. As soon as you walk through them doors, it doesn't matter how much money you got, what car you drive, everyone is the same. You've got two hands, two legs and one brain, you understand? So that's what I want to be able to provide. So I want to open some sort of centre, um, inshallah, for Muslims, non-Muslims, Christians, Jews, everyone just to come together, integrate um, and share the passion of sport and health because at the end of the day, health is wealth. So that's the most important thing. Um, so hopefully that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be able to put London on the map and you know help um, you know with um, you know the community coming together and um, you know being a, being one London. I'm sure Miller make that happen successfully and I can totally see that happening inshallah sure. and I'm sure actually a lot of people listening uh, will want to reach out to you um, not just um, to help support you in this initiative that you mentioned now but also to reach out to you via social media, maybe people who will be wanting to get in touch with you for mentoring, for general tips on health, and to even train with you. So, Salah, what was your best preference for the audience listening uh, in terms of in, to get in touch with you? Are you on social media? Um, do you have a preferred way of uh, communication? Yeah, I'm all over social media. Um, Instagram, uh, at Salah Beast. Um, and if you just search Salah Beast on any um, social media platform, then you'll be able to find me. Um, if anyone you know wants to contact you, then by all means contact you and get through to me. But I'm free to anything, uh, whether it be mentoring or helping you, you know, get your I don't know personal training qualification, or if you want to compete or anything you might need, and I can help you with. Um, then yeah, definitely I'll be able to give you some time. Perfect. That sounds amazing, and I'm sure a lot of people after uh, listening to that, they will take you up on that offer. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much, Salah, for making the time. Honestly, it's an honor, and I'm great. I'm very happy we've done this uh, interview, and I'm sure we've inspired a lot of people. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the interview. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're alerted as we upload more inspirational Muslim videos.